Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're taking a look at IL-2 Stormovic Cliffs of Dover Blitz DLC Expansion Pack Desert Wings Tobrick from Team Fusion Simulations. Now to start off, I will say that Cliffs of Dover Blitz has been out for a while. Uh, it is the product that predates, I believe, the uh, Great Battle series, which came out in 2013. Uh, Team Fusion is also responsible for the Blitz, Blitz edition of Cliffs of Dover, which uh, cleaned up a lot of that code, from what I understand, that was the original Cliffs of Dover product. So Cliffs of Dover Blitz is basically the last version of the Cliffs of Dover uh, product line up until Desert Wings Tobrick. Um, let's jump in here and take a look and I'll show you what we've got and this is my first impressions video so the first thing you're gonna notice is the interface does look a little bit dated and uh, that's because this is an older product so if we go to single player you've got training and this is basically leftover from Cliffs of Dover Blitz under quick mission you have a variety of different pre pre-generated missions with various tasks. Um, if we go to English Channel Summer or Winter, this is your Cliffs of Dover Blitz stuff. But let's go to Tobrick. Under Tobrick, we have uh, Free Flight Derna, Blue, Red Free Flight Derna, Blue Free Flight Tobrick, Red Free Flight Tobrick, Blue Free Flight Bardia, Red Free Flight Bardia, Blue One-on-One, -on -one, red one-on-one, -on -one, blue one-on-one -on -one bounce, red one-on-one -on -one bounce, blue dogfight number one, red dogfight number one, blue stuka attack, red attack on Derna, blue convoy attack, red convoy attack, blue torpedo attack, blue attack on Tobruk, red attack on Bardia, blue ground attack, and red ground attack. Let's jump in and do the Stuka attack. Alrighty, here we are in the Stuka attack. Let's look at the realism options. And this pretty much affects everything. So, I don't like limited ammo. I don't like limited fuel. Um, realistic bombing, realistic gunnery. I'm going to turn off the realistic bombing because I suck at realistically bombing and I'm not so good with realistic gunnery. I will leave on vulnerability and realistic ground collisions. Uh, I turned off complex engine management. I don't care for that. Engine temperature effects, I'm going to turn that off too. Oh, I do have it turned off. What am I saying? Uh, atmosphere and handling, I left all of these on for the realism factor. Uh, I like having icons so I can see what's going on. And uh, this is pretty much it for realism options in here. Let's jump in and give this a go. All right, here we are in the battle intro. And here's our map and what we have going on. Looks like up ahead here we have a convoy of ships. And there's probably going to be some planes protecting them as well. Player plane basically lets me go in here and, oh, I can change the color. That's interesting. Not sure what that changed. Visual weathering. Oh, okay. That's neat. I like a little bit of visual weathering. I can change and add a tail or serial number. Nose art, none. Nose art left, none. Paint scheme default. Oh, here we go. Oh, I like that one. So you could choose different paint schemes, my call sign squadron, my regiment. All right, I'm good with that. Let's go with that. All righty, here we are in the Stuka. Let's take a look around in the cockpit. And you know what? For being an older graphics engine, I'm very impressed by what I'm seeing here in the cockpit right now. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, all the upfront gauges and dials and everything look really good. Only when I look off to the side over here and I look at this texture over here, does it look a little bit dated? The rivets are a little bit blurry, but when you look at all the stuff that's up front that's important, where it counts, it's all very legible, very clear, and uh, very nicely done. 
absolutely nothing to complain about there. Looks like we have our targets up ahead. Let's take a look at this thing externally. And I gotta admit, it looks fantastic. Um, really impressed with being over engine how well this actually looks. Closer to our target. I'm about ready to swoop in and see what kind of damage I can do. And one of the things you'll notice is there's some of this stuff you can manipulate with the mouse. This is an older title, the older product that came before Great Battles, and in Great Battles I can't manipulate some of these things in the cockpit with the mouse, so that's pretty cool. Definitely having a bad day and aren't doing so well at defending themselves against this stupid attack. a little bit on that run though. Yeah, I'm smoking. I was too close for that. And I am messed up. Very nice damage modeling though. Look at that. Broke the glass. My engine's all screwed up. Look at the wingtip over there. It's gnarled up a little bit. Outstanding. That is an acceptable loss, I would say. How cool is that? Another mission I liked here that was very fun. Attack on Tobrick. Yes. So this is another fun one that I found enjoyable. So this is Attack on Tobrick. I'm going to choose clear weather. I'm going to choose the default time. And uh, I think it has me set up in a bomber to do the attack. but. Instead of being in the bomber to do the attack, which is signified by this little icon right here, I'm going to choose to be on the other side, and I want to fly this tomahawk. And again, here's my realism options, all the same as what it was before. And let's jump in here and see what we can do. Loading times are really fast, too, which I've noticed, which is really cool. Here's our map. Now I'm going to zoom out, and I want to show you how big the map is here. So it looks like this is parts of Libya, parts of Egypt. Uh, you've got Tobruk, Derna, uh, Sid, whatever this is over here. Sid, Barani and a ton of different airfields. All right, here we are in the Tomahawk. Once again, fantastic cockpit detail. Really nothing to complain about. 
Some of the textures are a little bit dated on the sides, but again, everything up front is very legible and readable, as one might expect. So we're going to head into the uh, area up ahead and see if we can find some of these bombers and slow them down. Externally, I would say it looks pretty damn nice, too. As I visually speaking, I think the gun firing is better, but the exterior textures, the rivets are very visible, uh, has a little bit of a worn look to it, uh, nothing to complain about. And again, looks pretty fantastic. Okay, we're coming up on the second waypoint here. Nice little visual effect there, glare from the sun. There's our desert terrain off to the side there. Now there are some JU-87s. I think we need to swoop in and take care of them flack off in the distance going off. Looks like we have some trouble up ahead. Now there are some 111s around here somewhere too that should be coming out. And again, at altitude, the desert terrain looks okay. I think down below, it's lacking a little bit. Um, they have created a bunch of little towns and you know areas of interest that look rather nice, though. So these guys are over here hammering. Our area. there. There's a bunch of planes. Smoking, which is rather good. out of my ass. Look at that part of my tail's missing. That's not very nice. So the one thing I'll say is I really like this Tomahawk. I mean, great battle series, the P-40 that they had. This one, however, doesn't seem underpowered. It seems very useful, and I've had a lot of fun flying it so far. This and the Stuka are the two that I've really dug into and uh, been flying, and uh, I find it to be a lot of fun. It really is. But I had a real hard time with the P-40 that was in uh, Great Battles, 
but in this, this thing feels really good. Going in. Take him out. Very nice. So these guys, I've had a hell of a time with. I've been able to catch some bombers, but getting in here and hitting some of these fighters can be a real pain in the ass. And this guy here is just what the hell? He is really maneuvering. Guys that really evade are really fun in this to try to Definitely a little harder. It's almost like the AI doing some crazy stuff. They're really tearing up our base down there. The other thing is, I do like that there's so much to do in these missions. Like this, there's a lot of targets in here. This is a lot of fun. Now they're starting to. So this is pretty busy, which is a lot of fun. And this other group of 110s, they're definitely smarter than the first group. They're evading more, they're really trying to catch me. Whoa, how about that? So there's definitely a difference in the AI in this. Some are definitely smarter than others. So that covered the quick mission. Let's look at single mission. So under single mission, there's a variety of prescripted missions all ready to go. And this is where you don't find as much of the Tobruk content. So you could tell English Channel, English Channel, English Channel, English Channel, uh, Dawn Attack on Port of Tobruk. These are your Tobruk missions. Um, there's probably only a small number overall of Tobruk missions. I want to say something like three. That's the second one. Yeah, maybe even two under the single missions, which is fine because you're going to find that once you go into campaign this is where you're gonna find the bulk of your content so the original Cliffs of Dover came with Adler Angriff and Cliffs of Dover but Desert Hawks is a Tobrick campaign Eagles over Tobrick is a Tobrick campaign Gravity is my friend is a Tobrick campaign uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that one that doesn't look like it's Tobrick uh, this one takes place over Egypt in 1940-41 in biplanes that's clearly a Desert Wings campaign Rats over Tobrick is a Tobrick campaign rising from the ashes this looks more like a uh, Battle of Britain style campaign I'm gonna say that is from the original product uh, Tempest Sol Africa clearly a Desert Wings Tobruk campaign and the Blue Wellingtons over Egypt that is also a Tobruk campaign so you get to do a lot of bomber flying 
in addition to fighters in this. Uh, I haven't figured out the interface yet for the bombers or have anything set up. I'm more of a fighter guy than I am into bombers. So, again, this is just my first impressions. I'm not rendering any final verdict on this as a review right now. I'm just showing you what's available. But uh, I'm going to take some time and jump in and learn some of these bombers here in the near future, and we're going to do some more videos on those. But it is a bomber and a fighter game in general or simulation uh, everything's a game because it's not real if you ask me but uh, it is a simulation and they've done a great job simulating the bombers and the fighters so, from what I've seen so far I've jumped into the bombers I just didn't have anything set up and I was kinda lost so I've got to go through there and set up all my keybinds to my HOTAS gear but as you can see the majority of your content is within these campaigns and there's so many campaigns it's just awesome okay back at the main menu so this is everything that was under single player let's take a look at multiplayer let's go to the server browser and it's going to search and find all the servers that are going so There's already a server over here with 17 out of 44 with the new Tobrick content, Team Fusion's own server. Uh, looks like there's only four of 100. They must have reset this server because I was making this video a little while ago and there was a lot more players. I want to say there was like 20 people in here at least out of 100. So their own server is rather busy and my ping times are rather acceptable at 29, which is nice. Uh, there's another Tobrick server here going on. Um, a lot of these other ones are only running the English Channel stuff, but it looks like you've got one, two, three, four servers running Tobruk content, which is really promising, especially if you're into online multiplayer. Uh, I haven't given online multiplayer a shot yet, but I do plan to in the near future. But I just wanted to jump in here and show you what's available. And uh, it does have a rather uh, reasonable multiplayer following online, so you should be able to find somebody to play with, which is rather cool. And then under options, um, you get your realism, which I've showed you. Uh, controls is where you can set everything up. And this has taken a little getting used to, to for me. Uh, it's a little different than what I'm used to in uh, Great Battle series. And it's taken you know a lot more time for me to set up my planes the way I want them. Because this is an older interface. I mean, it is technically an older product with a new DLC. Under video options, there's a variety of uh, possibilities here. I can run this all the way at 6651 by 1871. Now, granted, my frames aren't going to be what they are at 3840 by 1080, but because NVIDIA allows you to uh, create these different um, almost 4K resolutions that you can run based on what your uh, screen will offer. Uh, I could run these and it looks pretty grand that way. Uh, I haven't done this in a video because unfortunately the NVIDIA recording software will not allow me to record this which is really weird. It'll create it but it won't allow you to record it. Uh, full screen, detail level custom, here's all the advanced options. I have all this stuff cranked up to the, 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 the highest settings possible uh, and it looks as you can see pretty damn impressive. Uh, audio is pretty simple, sound, music, voice, sliders for that, uh, network, you can for LAN, you can set your uh, port and your local host up for that, what your IP address is, etc. So you could technically do this over LAN, but overall I would have to say that uh, Desert Wings Tobrick is a very unique product. Um, where you're going to find your value in Desert Wings Tobrick is in the sheer volume of content that you are given. Under Quick Mission, if you go to the Tobrick tab, you've got a ton of fantastic options here for uh, varied types of missions over the new map, which is really cool. Um, if you go into your campaigns, you've got more campaigns than you can shake a joystick at. Uh, tons. 
and it should keep you busy for quite some time. There's, ironically, there's more content in Desert Wings Tobrick than there is in the original Cliffs of Dover Blitz, at least from what I'm seeing. Uh, and again, I will throw this out there as a disclaimer, I am not that familiar with everything that was already in Cliffs of Dover Blitz. But again, your value in this product is coming from the fact that you're getting a lot of content, a ton of different planes. Let me go to quick mission. Let me go to click this. And this is where you could see all the planes. Now, again, me not being that familiar with uh, Cliffs of Dover Blitz, I can't tell you 100% accurately what planes were in here ahead of time because it throws them all in here together. But I will say, I'm pretty sure the Bowfighter is new. Um, the Wellingtons, I believe, are new. Any of these planes with the desert uh, paint jobs, I believe, are new and part of the Desert Wings Tobruk stable of planes, which are many. Um, when I put together my you know, full review, I will go in here and get you an exact number count, but there is a lot of planes, as you can see. So if you have Cliffs of Dover Blitz with the Desert Wings expansion, these are all the planes you get. I want to say it's something like 40 by looking at this easily. Maybe more. It's a lot. Look at all the different versions of the Wellingtons. I got a torpedo version of the Wellington. Uh, late Wellington. The Tomahawk, I'll tell you what. So far, this is the plane I've enjoyed the most. This Tomahawk is pretty kick-ass. That Stuka was fun, too, to be honest. And they even have, you know, these earlier planes, these, these biplanes in here for the earlier campaigns, which is really nice. Uh, not sure why there's an SU-26 in here. Maybe that's something that uh, they threw in Dover, you know, to let you fool around and have some fun. Uh, the Spitfire has been fun in here. Um, I believe there's a hurricane in here, too. Oh, and there's a Kitty Hawk, a Marlet. Um, they even have the Maki, the, the M202, the little Italian plane that I really enjoy the hell out of in the Great Battles series. So, again, while this does have a dated interface, and while this is an older graphics engine at work, uh, Team Fusion Simulations have put in a lot of hard work to really do the best they can and tweak this to give you uh, a lot better graphical uh, special effects. As you saw earlier in the video when I bombed that uh, naval ship before they screwed me up, uh, that was pretty impressive. They've done a great job with this overall. And uh, if you're into great battles and you're looking for something different, uh, this may be a lot of fun for you. But Visually speaking, you know, it doesn't look bad by any means, but it does not have all the bells and whistles of the Great Battle series. It just can't. It's an older product engine, basically. But again, I think they've really pushed this engine to the limit with what they've done uh, in Desert Wings Tobrick. So overall, I would have to say my first impressions of Desert Wings Tobrick is rather positive. Um, I think it's fun. I've been able to have a lot of fun with it uh, throughout the beta up until now, and uh, I think it has a lot to offer. I think my only real issue with it, uh, I think, is the price point at the moment. Uh, I think it's on sale for maybe 10 bucks off or something like that. I think it's like $59.99 instead of $69.99. Um, and that can go two ways. And I will say this. In DCS world, we buy a module sometimes for $70 to $80. And you get one plane, and you're handed it, and you're, you know, here, go find something to do with it, because they almost never give you content with it. Uh, you're supposed to just, you know, go find or make your own or download something somebody has created. So, in all fairness, the price of admission, while it seems rather high for Desert Wings Tobruk, uh, especially being an expansion pack, um, the level of content given is fantastic. Um, the, you do get a lot to do. You have a ton of planes, a ton of missions, and to me that is where the value comes from in this product. 
So the price of admission may sound rather high, and at first glance I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh my god, how can you charge that much for an expansion pack? And then I looked at what you get, and I'm like, wow, well, there's a lot there. So if you're looking for a lot to do uh, with a lot of different aircraft, this is probably for you. Um, if you know, uh, visually speaking, there's nothing to really complain about. Uh, it still looks fantastic. Uh, it's just not up to par with, say, the Great Battles series or DCS World at the moment. Um, but again, nothing looks bad by any means either. It's just a little bit older engine, and I think they've really pushed this engine as far as they can at this point. Um, I think some of the terrain could look a little bit better, but the cockpits look great. Um, shooting planes and explosions look great, which to me are the most important things. And uh, I've had a great deal of fun with it, and I think I'm going to continue to have a great deal of fun with Desert Wings Tobruk. And um, there's a lot more videos to come highlighting a lot of the different missions and uh, visuals within the game. And it also has some things that you can't find in the Great Battle series, like the ability to open up various windows, uh, customize them, um, move them around exactly where you want them. And uh, on top of that, there are some clickable features within the cockpits, which I do not remember ever seeing in Great Battles. And if I've missed that, then I apologize, but I'm pretty damn sure there's nothing in the Great Battles cockpits that I can click with my mouse. And here, uh, there might be a flaps, or uh, a gun sight, or a dimmer for a gun sight. Uh, there are some pretty cool and rather useful things that you can click within these cockpits, and I don't understand why that never made it into the later products like the Great Battles series. kind of baffles me. But overall, uh, my first impression is very positive of Desert Wings Tobrick. Uh, I've seen some people complaining, and they're going, ah, this is an old game, blah, 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 it's a lot of money, but have you really looked at it? Have you really looked what there is to offer within this? Uh, I think they've done a great job of giving you a lot to do. And to me, having a lot to do and a variety of planes to do it with is far more important than having just a pretty map or just the prettiest plane that you can possibly give somebody, you know. Um, or one plane and here, go find something to do with it like they do in DCS. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Overall, I think the Desert Wings Tobrick is a very cool expansion and it definitely improves upon a lot of stuff that was already there in uh, the Cliffs of Dover Blitz. Uh, you are required to have Cliffs of Dover Blitz to play it, so I will say that adds a little bit to the overall cost of admission, but at the same time I've seen Cliffs of Dover Blitz on sale for as low as six dollars on Steam. Um, not so bad. So that's that guys. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button, and until next time, guys.